Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, in this lecture, let's discuss dangerous dermatitis. We have already discussed about the sequelae of wearing complete dentures in the previous lectures. You can watch that video also. As you already know, dentures dermatitis is a direct sequelae of wearing complete denture. It is a pathological reaction of the denture bear mucosa. It is also known as denture induced dermatitis or denture sore mouth or inflammatory papillary hyperplasia or chronic atrophic candidiasis. And it is characterized by inflammation of the palate with the erythema limited in outline by the fitting surface of the denture. And the patient is often unaware of the condition because it is usually painless. In 1962, the dentist template is classified into three types by Newton. Type 1 dentist template. Here, a localized simple inflammation or pinpoint hyperemia is a characteristic feature of this type of stomatitis. This is type 2. Here, the more generalized erythematous area involving either a portion of or the entire surface of the denture covered mucosa. Here, the erythema of the entire mucosa in contact with the denture surface. It is a characteristic of type 2 variety. This one is type 3. Here a composite of types 1 and 2 in addition to granular inflammatory hyperplasia usually involving the midline of the heart palate and the alveolar ridges. So in type 3 additional papillary hyperplasia which may be nodular or mossy is present. On the basis of etiology, type 1 is often trauma induced, whereas type 2 and 3 are associated with denture plaque. Let's discuss what are the etiology factors for the denture stomatitis. As we already know, type 1 denture stomatitis is trauma induced, and type 2 denture stomatitis is denture plaque induced. So, the major etiology factors are tissue trauma and denture plaque. And this tissue trauma can be associated with occlusive discrepancies, denture defects, lack of oral and denture hygiene, denture age and continuous denture wearing. The main cause is the presence of denture in the oral cavity and is associated with patients wearing dentures day and night. And this infection frequently disappears if the dentures are not worn and the supporting tissues are allowed to rest. And the third etiologic factor is there that is candida albicans. So the fourth type of dangerous stomatitis is candida associated dangerous stomatitis. So coming to candida associated dangerous stomatitis. Candida albicans is most often associated with the dangerous stomatitis along with the other causative factors. So here the etiology factor is candida albicans. And uh, there are certain predisposing local as well as systemic factors for this type of dangerous stomatitis. They are listed in this table. Table showing predisposing factors for candida associated dangerous stomatitis. Systemic factors are old age, diabetes mellitus, nutritional deficiencies, iron, folate or what, vitamin B12, malignancies that is acute leukemia, agranulocytosis, then immunosuppression due to disease or use of steroids. The local factors are dangers, serostomia, high carbohydrate diet, broad spectrum antibiotics and smoking. So these are the predisposing factors for candida associated dangerous stomatitis. Here I am showing some pictures of candida associated dangerous stomatitis. So in this picture, it's shown that severe tissue trauma from an ill-fitting denture which has led to both hyperplastic tissue changes and a candida infection. And this candida infection can be manifested 
in the corners of the mouth as angular chelitis. That is inflammation in the corners of the mouth. The, and it is quite painful also. But after antifungal therapy and uh, correct prosthodontic management, this angular chelitis can be elevated. And in this picture, it is shown that the microbial plaque, which is uh, present in the dangerous intaglio surface, which is visualized with stain erythros. This, uh, and, uh, this microbial deposits are seen in this intaglio surface and which is uh, seen in the stain erythros, which is visualized in this with the stain erythros. And this is the picture showing diffuse atrophic glossite. Coming to diagnosis of candida associated dental stomatitis. It is confirmed by presence of mycelia or pseudohyphae in a direct smear or the isolation of candida in high numbers from the lesion. That is more than 50 colonies. So, this is the picture showing pseudohyphae. So, if pseudohyphae is present, then we can confirm it is candida associated denture stem tetis. Coming to prevention of denture stem tetis. First one is the denture care. So, brush the dentures daily, soak the dentures daily, then leave the dentures out at night and visit the dentures regularly. So, that is incision of effective oral and denture hygiene. So, the patient is instructed to scrub and clean the dentures with soap after every meal and massage the mucosa in contact with the dentures with soft toothbrush. Then, the patient is advised against wearing the denture at night and the dentures should be soaked overnight in an antiseptic solution such as 0.2 to 2 percent chlorhexidine or dilute sodium hypochlorite that is 10 drops of household bleach in a denture cup or a container filled with tap water. If the denture base contains metal, then the patient should avoid using hypochlorite because it causes metal to tarnish. So, advise the patient not, wear, not to wear the dentures at night, during night. So, the, also there are various uh, storage containers are available. That is, denture storage containers are available. And then visit to the dentist regularly. And the polishing of the denture sur surface, that is tissue surface of the denture to facilitate cleaning. Then coming to correction of ill-fitting dentures. So the areas of denture causing trauma to the tissues are trimmed and polished. And the correction of the these ill-fitting dentures is by First one is the areas of denture causing trauma to the tissues are trimmed and polished. Then rough areas on the fitting surface can be smoothened or relined with tissue conditioner. Tissue conditioners can be used for reline. Coming to antifungal therapy. It is indicated when the clinical diagnosis is confirmed by mycological examination. So, if pseudohyphae present in the mycological examination, then the diagnosis is confirmed. And also there is associated burning sensation from the oral mucosa. And the various drugs uh, are used, uh, that is antifungal drugs like nystatin, amphotericin B, myconazole or clotrimazole is preferred to systemic therapy with ketoconazole or fluconazole due to frequent drug Systems. So, to prevent the recurrence, antifungal treatment should continue for 4 weeks. Patients are instructed to remove the dentures during sucking when lozenges are prescribed and the patient should follow meticulous oral and denture hygiene. Coming to last treatment that is surgical treatment. 
it is indicated in type 3 dangerous hepatitis to eliminate crypts and ensure effective mucosal hygiene then cryo surgery is more preferred coming to a literature review that is in vitro assessment of antifungal effects of neem powder added to polymethyl methacrylate denture based material that is by uh, Shorok et al. Here they, they take cultures of candida albicans colonies based on different neem concentrations that is heat polymerized acrylic dressing. First one is control then B it is 0.5 percentage neem C is 1 percentage neem D is 1.5 percentage E is 2 percentage and F is 2.5 so the we can see that the colonies are decreasing and uh, they got the mean values of the candida albicans colonies for all tested specimens according to the neem concentrations so they concluded that within the limitations of their study they concluded that the neem powder exhibits antifungal activity by decreasing the adhesion of candida albicans to danger based materials so, the acrylic resin modified with neem could be used for the fabrication of removable processes as a possible dangerous dermatitis treatment or prevention method. However, there are further, further investigations of the uh, physical and mechanical results of adding neem to denture based materials are required. So, coming to the management of denture induced dermatitis. In summary, it can be summarized as the management through denture care, oral hygiene, then rest to the oral tissues, then a balanced denutrition, then correction of ill-fitting dentures, then tissue conditioners, antifungal therapy and surgery. So coming to the end of this lecture. In this lecture, we have discussed dangerous stomatitis in detail. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.